Hey everyone, Mr. Axbus here. In this video, I'll be giving 5 useful tips for every class in Wolfface. Those being the Rifleman, Medic, Engineer, Sniper, and yes, also the Sed. Some of these will probably be known facts, but I'm convinced that some may surprise you and could really help to improve your gameplay. With pretty much all these tips also working on both PC and console. So with this short intro out of the way, let's take a look at these 5 tips for every class in Wolfface. Let's start off with the Rifemen, and first of all, aside from the sets, Rifemen generally have the highest amount of armor when compared to other classes. This, together with their versatile arsenal and ammo pack, make them arguably the most powerful class for PvE, as well as giving them a slight advantage when they take direct fights in PvP. Second of all, Rifemen primaries usually have a high hit multiplier and a low damage drop, giving them a very good one-hit headshot distance. You can make the most out of this by taking fights at longer distances, as this will give you a massive advantage over all but snipers. Especially considering the armor advantage as well. The third tip for the Rifemen is with regards to one of the attachments that they can equip, the Grenade Launcher. Some Assault Rifles for the Rifemen have access to the standard Grenade Launcher, while the VHS-2 and Imba IA-2 Assault have special Grenade Launchers. These can essentially be used as an additional grenade in both PvE and PvP. However, the standard grenade launcher increases recoil and significantly reduces accuracy, where it makes your aim accuracy three times as bad as when you're not using it. The grenade launchers on the VHS-2 and Imbal IA-2 Assault are a lot better, where the VHS-2 only has a minor accuracy reduction, a faster projectile speed and a slightly bigger explosive radius. The Imbal IA-2 Assault's grenade launcher provides a slower projectile speed, with much more damage and an even bigger explosion radius, as well as having no downsides at all for the main weapon. Next up, the Rifeman's utility item, the Ammo Pack, has a mod called Instant Reload, which, as the name implies, allows you to immediately reload the weapons of the one you're giving the ammo pack to, including yourself. This can actually make you reload faster if the person that you're giving the ammo pack to has a weapon with a very slow reload speed, for example when they are using a light machine gun. This ammo pack can also be given while somebody is already shooting, allowing them to pretty much fire indefinitely. And speaking of ammo packs, don't forget to often give ammo to your teammates in PvE. Ideally, you want to give ammo to them once the icon pops up above their head, but if they're close to you, you can simply select the ammo pack and aim at your teammates to see how much ammo they still have left. If they have less than two thirds of their ammo remaining, you can already give the ammo pack to them. Next up, we have the Medic, and one of the most useful things you can do for this class is to get a convenient keybind for your defibrillator, which is listed as your second special item. It allows you to instantly swap to your defibrillator and, if you're close enough to someone, immediately start reviving them as well. This allows you to start to revive more easily and make it a little bit faster, potentially saving you a precious amount of time that may allow you to pull off a revive you normally could not. Secondly, make sure to equip a secondary weapon that is well suited for longer distances. As your primary is only good for close range, or well at least most of the time, you want to have a secondary option that allows you to reliably take down opponents from a distance. In particular, any pistol with a high base damage and a good head multiplier, like a Desert Eagle, Metabo Ultra Revolver or Walter P99 will work very well. Next up, we have to talk about the Defib again, because when you have the option to revive multiple players, make sure to think about which one should be prioritized over the other. For example, if there is a Medic, Engineer or Sniper you can revive, always go for the Medic first, as they will then be able to immediately revive another player. Another example is when you need to defuse the bomb. If there is an Engineer you can revive, make sure to do so, because it can win rounds you normally wouldn't be able to. A defib revives in just over a second, while an engineer can defuse 3 seconds faster than you. This therefore gives you a 2 second advantage and will therefore allow you to again win more rounds. Sticking to defibs, don't just revive a player, especially when you are playing ranked. Most players will prevent you from reviving a player by using their grenade or by pre-firing the smoke you've just thrown. Instead, try to anticipate when it is safe to revive or fake the revive, so the opponent may waste their shots or grenades, allowing you to revive more safely. Another interesting point is that reviving a player in game modes like Team Deathmatch or Team Gun Game will deny the enemy team a point, as it only counts when the player that got taken out respawns. So if someone revives you in TDM, don't get mad at them immediately, it may be for this reason. And lastly, if you desperately need to perform a revive on someone, a last resort option involves using a smoke, then immediately prone when you revive. 
Since you are in a neutral position that is standing when you get revived, many players will aim at around waist level to take out the player who just got revived. By proning, you make it a lot safer for yourself to revive someone and, with some luck, could also allow the revived player to get away safely. The third set of tips will be for all the engineer mains watching. And one of the best tips I can immediately give you is do not forget to use your mine, especially in ranked. Whenever you plant a bomb, one of the best things you can do is place a mine facing directly towards the bomb. As this may cost the opponents 1 or 2 seconds to clear, or in the best case scenario, take them out entirely, which obviously wins you the round. In PvE, by far the best use of the mine is to take out turrets. As most turrets in special operations take more damage from explosives, it can be incredibly useful to place your mine next to a turret spawn point to then immediately destroy it by detonating the mine. Also learn how to properly place your standard mines. When you expect opponents to run past your mine, for example when it's in a hard to see spot, place it in a more forward position so it triggers and therefore detonates faster. However, when you want to use it to prevent someone from easily pushing in or to prevent a defuse, place it at an angle away from the position the opponents may come from. This makes it harder for them to bait the mine by triggering it and then quickly moving back into cover, and at worst, forces them to shoot it directly or in some cases could even completely prevent access to a certain spot without tanking the damage from it. The third point is about the armor pack, because make sure to give your teammates as much armor as possible. For all classes except the set, armor soaks up 80% of any damage dealt, and since the amount of armor is almost always higher than the health pool, you will easily be able to save both yourself and your teammates with this. Seds actually completely rely on this armor, as 99% of the damage they take is taken up by the armor. Additionally, Seds only have 30 health points with at least 10 times the amount of armor, which they can't regenerate by themselves, which is why you should always bring at least one engineer when you have a set in your team. The fourth point is about defusing, because whenever you have the chance to do it, just go for it. Especially if you combine it with a smoke, you can win rounds in the most ridiculous way possible, as it only takes just over 3 seconds to defuse, and by the time the enemy finds out, you have probably already won the round. For example, if you're fast and lucky enough, you can literally just walk towards the bomb and immediately defuse it. Additionally, you can defuse the bomb while proning, which as we just saw with medics, can make it a lot easier to succeed in these defuse attempts. And lastly, similar to a medic, it could be beneficial to bind a key for your set defibrillator when playing PvE. And since both defibrillators use the same key, you have probably already done this. It could also be useful to bring a long-range oriented pistol, as you could easily be outranged by a rifleman or sniper. Although this problem is of course not as big as with medics. The fourth class we are going to take a look at is the sniper, which generally have the weakest armor in the game, at least for most armor sets. This therefore already puts you at a disadvantage when taking a direct fight, so you must be more careful with your positioning than with other classes and engage from longer distances more often, as this is obviously where this class will be in its comfort zone. Secondly, make sure to use hard to reach spots, like double boosted spots, or position yourself such that you are hard to see or hit. This makes it harder for opponents, especially riflemen, to take you out, and will make it easier for you to catch someone off guard. For PvE, if you're playing a map with many targets at a distance, like Cold Peak, bringing a sniper can essentially turn these missions into a cakewalk. Most enemies have a health pool of 200 HP, and since most semi-automatic snipers do more damage than this, you will be able to instantly kill them with a single body shot. Some examples include the Cobalt Kinetics 27, M4 Marksman Custom, or Caltech RDBC. On the other hand, if you are playing PvP with a bolt action sniper, make sure you know the damage profile of it and which armor set it allows you to one hit KO. For example, the AWP will guarantee you a one hit on the latest hardcore armor set wherever you hit them. But if you're using a silencer, it will only one hit on the body and the head. The limbs will now give you a hit marker. And lastly, opposite of what a medic or engineer would have, equip a secondary weapon that works well at close range. The Bakul Lupara may be the first weapon that comes to mind, but try something like a machine pistol, such as the Tech 9 or MPA 930 DMG, as these will also allow you to deny revives or finish off a player from a distance. And last but not least, we'll be taking a look at how you can make the most out of the set class. First of all, the set is the only class that is able to climb by itself at walls where you normally need two players. This not only makes the set incredibly useful in PvE, as you can simply send a single set to an area that normally requires two players, but can also make it a very dangerous opponent in PvP, as it can appear in spots where you would normally never expect an opponent to come from. 
A set also has a very large armor pool that does not regenerate, as well as a very small health pool that regenerates very slowly at only 1 health per second. This makes them extremely vulnerable to melee hits, as a single hit from pretty much any melee weapon, including a weapon kick, could take you out. You therefore want to make sure you always keep at least some distance between you and your opponents as a set. Or conversely, you can easily take out a set by getting close and giving them a nice kiss on the forehead. Next up, let's take a look at the set's primary weapons, the machine guns. Since they take a few shots to become accurate, it's usually a good idea to pre-fire. This applies to both PvP and PvE, and in this case, the Gao 19B hybrid can do this faster than the XM556 microgun due to the Gao having a higher rate of fire. Additionally, crouching makes the accuracy increase very quickly, so you can easily increase the accuracy by crouching, firing a few shots, then standing back up again to quickly achieve optimal accuracy as a set. Speaking of accuracy, the set has a very good jumping accuracy, which makes them very good for farming points in PvE, as well as farming lots of resources in missions like Cold Peak and Hydra, further increasing its potential for these spec ops. And lastly, let's talk about the set's grenade launcher, as it is very special. Not only is it the only grenade launcher with more than one grenade available, it also has a very high projectile speed and even functions as a flashbang, but it only deals 150 damage, much less than a standard one. Despite this low damage though, it can be a very dangerous weapon in PvP, as it makes finishing off players or farming revives child's play. But it is also a very good PvE weapon, as it will deal massive damage to turrets and can also blind enemies thanks to the flashbang effect. And that's everything. If you have any other class-specific points you think everyone should know, let me know in the comments or on my Discord server, and maybe I'll include it into another video. Also, if you liked this video and would like to see more in the future, make sure to subscribe so you won't miss any of them. You can also like or dislike the video accordingly. Lastly, I also regularly stream on Twitch to record stuff for these videos, including this one. You'll find the links for this and my Discord server in the description. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video and have learned something new. And as always, have a great day.